Welcome to e-learning module on congenital anomalies. I am Dr. Mrinal, consultant neurontology, SUT Hospital, Trivandrum. Birth defects are not uncommon. Incidence of major birth defects in infants is up to 3%. Causes of birth defects are mostly unknown up to 50%. Multifactorial up to 30%, single gene disorders up to 20%, chromosomal abnormalities up to 15%, infections, maternal diabetes, maternal medications are other causes. The risk of having any one major birth defect is less than 1%, but this risk increases significantly if other relatives have same birth defect. Birth defects can be classified as major anomalies, minor anomalies and normal variation. It's important to do a detailed head-to-toe examination to detect the various anomalies in a baby. Now coming to the variation, normal variation are morphological features with absolutely no medical significance like epicanthal fold, attached or unattached earlobe is seen in more than 4% of population. Example are epicanthal fold, low nasal bridge, minor ear abnormality, micrognathia, short palpable fissure, flat midface, short nose, indistinct philtrum, thin upper lip. Minor anomalies are minor variations of normal for morphological features of little or no known medical, surgical or cosmetic in significance. It's seen in less than 4% of the population. Major abnormality or abnormality that has medical, surgical or cosmetic significance such as polydactyly, cleft lip and cleft palate, anencephaly. Types of morphologic abnormalities are malformation, deformation, disruption and dysplasia. Now let's come into the definitions of each. Malformation is a defect of morphogenesis in an organ or structure due to intrinsically abnormal problem with formation, growth or differentiation of an organ or structure. Example is microtia, neural tube defect, cleft palate, syndactyly, cyrenomelia, neural tube defects, omphalocele, gastrostasis, cleft lip, cleft palate. Now during the development, the timing is very important. For example, in cleft palate, the fusion of the palatal shelves happen between 8 to 10 weeks of gestational age. And, and any insult during this time can lead to cleft palate. And the various formations of uh, cleft lip and cleft palate abnormalities. The malformations are not specific. They can be an isolated anomaly. A feature in syndrome, sequence or association, feature of chromosomal disorder, single gene defect, multifactorial disorder or a secondary to teratogenic effect. There can be etiologic heterogeneity. For example, the cleft lip, cleft palate, most are sporad sporadic but can be due to intrauterine teratogenic exp exposure, 22Q deletion, primary mandibular hypoplasia, trisomy 13, amniotic band, focal dermal hypoplasia, non-syndromic failure of palatal closure. Deformation is an abnormal form or position of a body or region of the body caused by extrinsic non-disruptive mechanical forces on a normally developing structure such as a club foot, congenital hip dislocation, craniofacial asymmetry, overfolded ear. The figure shows a deformity of a ear helix due to uterine compression. Deformation can also occur because of oligohydramnios leading to pulmonary hypoplasia and porter facies as in renal dysplasia. Disruption can occur because of destructive breakdown of or interference with a normally developing structure resulting in death or of cells or tissue destruction. It may be secondary to mechanical forces, infection or even vascular events. Such as, such as a loss of digit due to amniotic band constriction, lack of normal limb, limb development due to intrauterine vascular accident. This figure shows a disruption of the lip formation due to amniotic band. 
Amniotic band can cause multiple disruptions. Dysplasia is an error of morphogenesis due to abnormal cellular organization of function in a specific type of tissue, most often due to single gene defect. It can be due to achondroplasia, ectopic dysplasia, osteogenesis imperfecta, diastrophic dysplasia. Now the anomalies can have a recognizable pattern which is then classified into syndromes, associations or sequences or field defects. A syndrome is said to happen if there are multiple anomalies of which more than one major anomaly and more than three minor anomalies. For example, in melocardiofacial syndrome, there can be cardiac anomalies, palatal defect, developmental delays and characteristic facies which includes normal narrow palpable fissure, overfolded helix, puffy lids. Syndrome is therefore multiple anomalies in one or more tissues or structures thought to be pathologically related due to a specific etiologic mechanism such as chromosomal disorder, single gene defect, environmental agent or unknown factor not, not due to related sequence of defect or field defect. Example Down syndrome, Williams syndrome, fetal alcohol syndrome, Turner syndrome. From the Greek, the syndrome meaning is running together. This figure shows an example of a syndrome, the Turner syndrome. Sequence or field defect. It's a constellation of defect derived from a cascade of effect related to a single known or presumed localized abnormality such as malformation, deformation and disruption. For example, a renal dysplasia can lead to portal sequence because of pulmonary hypoplasia and facial dysmorphism. A mandibular hypoplasia can lead to pierre robin sequence leading to cleft palate. A meningomyelocele can similarly lead to a sequence or field defect which includes club foot, hip, hip dislocation and hydrocephalus. This is a picture showing pulmonary sequence and a pulmonary hypoplasia with histopathologic evidence of pulmonary hypoplasia. Now the association is also another pattern of anomalies, associated anomalies. It's a non-random occurrence of combination of several anomalies with a not yet identified as a specific sequence of syndrome that occur more often together than by chance alone. For example, is the waiter association and the charge association. There are difficulty in diagnosing syndromes because these are very rare disorders with variable expression, incomplete penetrance, and the sexual, uh, the chromosome, the sex chromosomes may affect or influence their expression, and there may be etiologic heterogeneity as well. And the management of congenital anomaly should include a conduct a careful clinical evaluation, head to toe examination, as, uh, review the family prenatal history and perinatal history, obtain diagnostic studies like imaging studies like photograph, x-rays, lab studies like chromosome study, DNA analysis, biochemical assays, provide medical management and genetic counseling. If the baby has expired, request autopsy and specific pathological analysis. If fetal death or stillborn, provide parents an opportunity to see and hold the baby. Provide referrals to social work, psychological services and support group as appropriate. The take-home message would be to explain medical concerns to the parents openly and honestly. Humanize abnormal findings and not the normal findings too. Use diagnostic and medical terms as appropriate. Avoid extensive differential diagnosis, premature diagnosis. Be careful about premature prognostication. Check facial expression and body language of parents or the caretaker. Listen to family concern and adhere to their agendas when possible. Be supportive and not be unrealistic or enmeshed. Provide frequent, honest update of accurate information and provide psychosocial support services. Thank you.